Alrighty, YouTube, back at it. We're doing the Scan AR620 build. Um, as you can see, the cabs all together. Uh, I did that on my own time because it's a bunch of little things that go together. We'll just talk about real quick. Um, when you're building it, so we're going to just talk briefly about step 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Um, with the M MFC unit, you cannot do 46. There's no room for an interior. So I, I just grazed right over that. I skipped that step entirely. Um, a lot of this stuff, you know, parts have to be glued on. So I don't want to do that until I've got the truck fully painted, of course. So um, we'll just graze uh, br briefly talk about the rest of the book. And then we'll jump into the MFU unit. So, or the MFC, I'm sorry, MFC unit. Um, so, for 41, that's going to be building your mirrors. That all comes in a separate bag. Uh, your mirror bracket, your screws, your nut, everything you're going to need is in this separate bag. Oh, except for your nuts. Sorry, your nuts are the kit. Um... And then you also build this uh, pole slide here. This That slide is actually this piece right here. It's going to be kind of hard to see. It's held into the body with these two screws. And then it connects to the chassis plate right here. Let's see if I can make it so you can see. This place right here with another little tab. And what it does is when you rock the body forward, it locks it so it doesn't fall crash into the ground. So, let's get that back. Stay. So, um, once you've got that done, um, make sure you're painting and everything before you go along. But uh, once you got that done, you attach them inside the cab with the windows, and they go on with two of your uh, BB6 nuts. They give you this little guy here. It's just a little nut driver. Use that, you put the nut inside of it, and you get it started with that, and you get it down as tight as you can with that, and then I use, um, I just use a, a wrench and tighten it down even more. Make sure you're lock tightening everything, because with the MFC unit, the, the control unit, there's a vibration feature, which will vibrate things loose. So, your windshield is held on, um, your windshield goes in from the bottom and is held on to the, the part with two uh, screws and nuts. Again, just use this guy to get you situated with that. Um, you're also going to do your body mount here. That's where your cab locks into the actual chassis when you're, you're all done. Um, now on the sides, we have three pieces, this piece, this piece, and the roof piece. Um, they all go on independently. Uh, this piece and this piece go on before the roof piece. Um, the roof piece, you have to add an extra bracket, so don't forget to add that extra bracket. Make sure your big tab, it's got a big long, like a half inch tab, make sure that's pointing into the rear, like this right here. So it kind of gives a ledge to sit on. So, um, once you've done that and you've got your, uh, your wings attached, you do your side wings and everything with the, uh, ME2. Everything's going to be pretty much done with an ME2 now. They're the long 2 millimeters. They're a 2 by 8 mil, and they use the BB6 nut. So, you got to do all that prior to, uh, taking care of this step, obviously. So once you've done all that, you're going to go ahead and install your front bracket, this piece here. It mounts behind this grill, so don't put this grill on until you, you put it on, but it mounts with two big screws that come in the kit with this bracket and everything. It's uh, your uh, MF. MF1 screw and it uses four flange nuts 
two on the or not on the inside, um, but two right here and two right here, which hold your hinge on. Um, the hinge is right here, so you can you know rock the cab forward to get into the compartment to make sure everything inside's okay, or to adjust or change anything as you go. Um, these two side, these two mirror or wing pieces too, are held on with two screws that are right here um, behind this piece. You have to paint inside here black before um, you put this on, and I didn't, I didn't know the whole front end was going to be black, so I painted it all red. So I got to go through and fix some paint issues on the cab, and then there's some mesh that you get. Now the stay. The manual shows you what your pattern is going to look like for your mesh. Um, if you have access to a photocopier, I would just go and photocopy this page so you can cut it out and lay it on your mesh and get a good cut. Um, once you've got that cut though, it just glues in to your your grill and just glue along the outer edges, real thin. Don't put globs on. You don't want to. You don't want to have a mess when you're done. So um, inside the cab, there's another metal bracket. Um, let's see if I can get this thing flipped around. This guy here. This metal bracket's got um, holes, machined holes in it. So make sure you're putting Loctite on all your screws that are going into it. So Loctite all six of these screws, two of or eight, two of them are gonna be your 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 wing pieces here and two of them are gonna be your um, grill. So uh, you glue on your your glue on your windshield wipers um, Do your headlights and stuff. They show you putting the headlight in first, and then installing this this back piece. But I found that if I did the back piece before I put the headlight in, it was a lot easier. And then I can roll the headlight this way. Um, do note that this back piece screws in. So that way you, you're kind of holding this and rolling it in place and putting two screws here. And then you got two screws right up in here behind this grill um, to contend with. So just be aware of that. It was just easier for me to do it one way than the other. Um, this is also going to get some mesh. And again, there's a pattern. So just photocopy it and get your pattern. Now... <clears throat> If you're doing the multi-function control unit, this portion says it calls for stickers, but don't put the stickers on if you're putting the multi-function control unit in, obviously, because then you won't get any light through the stickers. So, in the multi-control function, um, multi-function control unit, you're getting a bunch of LEDs. So you're going to get a headlight, a fog light, an auxiliary lamp front, auxiliary lamp rear, a main beam, a reverse. Oh wait, you don't get the main beam. For some reason there's just no main beam. But then you get a reverse tail light, roof lamp, blinkers, four sets of blinkers, left, right, front, rear. Um, and then you get what's called speed indicators. The speed indicators light up depending on what gear you're in. So I didn't put those in because I don't care about that. I know what gear I'm in. <coughs> Excuse me. But then, um, so when you're doing this, the, the control unit, they don't tell you in the paperwork for the control unit what goes where. They tell you what goes where in the back of your main unit. So, because we're on that bumper part, we want to check the back. 
and you can see right here in the back it tells us we're going to go ahead and put a uh, aux R and an aux light um, F. So one F, one R in to each hole. Um, once you've done that, they're going to call for in your other bumper part, they're going to call for a um, the words a blinker, which is this corner unit right here. Then they call for a fog lamp. And then a headlight. So these two are a fog lamp and then a headlight. And then when you're doing this and you're installing all this, make sure you're conscious of where your wires are. Your screw goes right here. It's kind of hard to see right here in these two holes. So you want to make sure your, your wires are out of that way. So what I'm going to do real quick... And they mount the cab back up. And I'll put the bumper on. And then I'll show you guys how to... Show you guys how I got the controller set up. Just almost pushed it off the table. That definitely would have been bad if I had pushed it off the table. So, now that we got this together, like so, let's go ahead and fire up the control unit. Same point of battery. Now, I'm running this whole thing off my DX9. I tried it with my pistol grip radio and I could not get it to work. And it says it won't work with your pistol grip radio, but I just wanted to give it a shot. And, well, it does not work. So, nothing's mounted quite yet. What I ended up having to do... What I ended up having to do was, um, I actually went into the radio, and, uh, I went to my dual rates, and I went to elevator and rudder. I left aileron alone, but I went to elevator and rudder, 
And I changed both of those to 67. Um, I got that number from a guy on the forum, so I didn't, I'm not magically coming up with a number. You can see it's just 67. And then when I toggle my dual rate switch, it jumps up to 100. So that way, um, I can get it to work because your trims on this are digital. So they don't actually give you any extra leeway on like the analogs. Apparently the analogs do something a bit different. So, let's turn her up a little so we can hear her. When you first start it, you're going to get a beeping. That is the engine startup sound. You cannot start the truck until you hear that last part. Once you go to start the truck though, um, you have to reverse your uh, uh, elevator though, just as a heads up, you have to reverse your elevator. But once you've got it, like that sound's done, you just pull down on your, eleva your elevator a little. So, that is it. That's the control unit working. That's how uh, that's how I did it. Um, you do get all your features. So if you pull down on your turn this up, see it. The motor's not hooked up, so it's not going to run away on me. But if you pull down on your elevator uh, once it's running, real quick, you'll get your headlights to turn on. Like so. Um, if you push up on your elevator, you get a horn. Now, if you bring it down, this, you get your blinker. So it's down into the right a little to get your right blinker. And down into the left a little. There's a sweet spot. You gotta find it. to get your left blinker. It's kind of hard to see, but it's blinking down there. Um, if you hold down on the right stick, you'll get a revving. And then yank back you get a brake this right here when you do this it actually engages the clutch uh, it's weird to hear or disengages the clutch so that way you don't move the truck like if you let go you'll still get the audible and the revving but it won't be as it'll actually be moving this time but we don't want it to move so we're not doing that um, Center your stick up, and slowly go back, you'll get reverse. Now, you can change your blinker sound by clicking up your dual rate. Oh, before we go to the blinker. Um, you get your hazards. Hazards by going up with your dual rate switch up, so at 100% on your rates. Um, if you come down, diagonally into the corner it actually changes the sound and if you go over to the right oops, with your drill right on it'll change your horn so dual right on over to the right dual right off different horn and then dual right on to turn your blinkers back off again. Now, to shut the truck off, you have to have your dual right on, press over and down, and let center. Now you hear that chiming. That's telling me I still have lights on. If I hit it again, lights go out and charming's gone. So, 
that is our last build video for this. Um, feel free to email me or Facebook me for or not Facebook, but YouTube me for questions if there's questions about any of these steps. Um, other than that, I think it's a done truck. I'm going to paint it. I'll do another video once I get it painted. And I have another part coming, which I'll show you guys installing that other part. And we'll do a run video shortly. So, um, thanks for watching my videos. And uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys are thinking. So, Speedy Mac signing off.